So I'm sitting at my desk working for an edit for another video and a WhatsApp message comes through from Matt, Fish Shop Matt, and he tells me they've got some amazing archer fish in. I've never had them before, I've never even seen them in person before. So this has got me excited. So I've been informed that there's a trio of fish in and they are the clouded archer fish type. So straight away, I'm on Google, I'm on Care Sheets, I'm going through every bit of information I can find. I actually found some quite contrasting opinions on different Care Sheets, but we'll get into that later. What I think is a really good idea though is just to get to the shop, have a good look at them, hear what Matt has to say. I mean, Matt and Martin in the shop, they know everything about all the fish, so they are my number one sort of source of information to go to and I trust them over anything. So let's get there, let's have a look at the fish and see what they've got to say as well. Morning. <laughs> Morning, how you doing? Look at that, all mic'd up and everything. It's, I know, like, yeah. it's like you knew I was coming. Might have seen you coming. <laughs> <laughs> so I've received the pictures of the archer fish. They're cool, aren't they? I've come here to see them in real life just so I can discuss with you requirements. Yep. What sort of tank we should create or I should create. Yep. In your opinion. Yep. Um, can you take me to them, please? <laughs> Come on, then. Come on, then. They're just round here. So. So you said a custom brought them in? Yeah, so one of our regulars, um, essentially, they were just a bit much for his tank. They were getting a bit, yeah, sort of, he had, he's got a lot of, um, not aggressive fish, but a lot of territorial fish. So he wanted to try and get these guys to settle in and they just wouldn't settle properly with them. So they just need a bit of a quieter tank, I think. Oh, they look so good. They're great, aren't they? Yeah, really, really healthy looking. Yeah. Oh, so thick. And they're a good size as well, aren't they? Yeah, really nice. When you get them small, it's yeah, quite tricky. They can be a bit funny to feed sometimes, but at that size, they're going to be spot on, really. They look about five inches, four or five inches. And from my reading, it says that in captivity, that's pretty much where yeah. you're at, a little bit bigger. Yeah, a tiny bit bigger. So I've seen them, you know, if you had a massive great tank with tons of food going in there, I've seen some sort of reports saying up to six inches, but yeah, I think you would, I think they're gonna be a slow grower at that size. I did read elsewhere as well, that they can get up to 12 inches in the wild and all yeah. this and it's like, and then other uh, other sites saying you need a hundred gallon tank for them. This is it. I think there's a <laughs> bit of a mix up in species sometimes I as well, you. because yeah. there is there is obviously several species and yeah, I think there might be a bit of confusion. Cause I did read a few reports a little while ago that said very similar things. And I was like, well, I've never seen one of these, that certain species up at that size. Yeah, no, they look, they look brilliant and they're gonna work really well so I've got I'm, I'm planning a four foot tank nice um, now given that these guys I, I read that they can jump double their body length so I yep. need to drop the water level yeah so I might as well do a paludarium yeah absolutely yeah I think that'd be really cool um, that gives you opportunity as well to maybe target feed them yes so, that's what I want to do learn the target feed and yeah that could be really cool because you know you can get bugs and insects you know live crickets and things like yeah. that they are tricky because they do start wandering then. You might lose a few into the studio. So, it might, yeah, it might be tricky. But once you get them target feeding, they are so cool. I'm going to, I'm going to give that a go. You said use like a um, stirrer. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, a, like a cocktail stirrer. That's what we used to use because um, it was just easy. It was a stick with a round paddle on the end. Um, and, yeah, you could literally hold it above them. They would spit at it and then you drop in the food. Um, and they essentially get accustomed to that's how they feed. All right. Martin said to get Dow with like a piece of clear plastic yeah, and then a mine. black dot in the middle. Martin makes things, whereas, whereas me and you are more like, let's find something that works. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just pull, you're like, just pull something out of the drawer. Yeah, that's it. What have we got? Oh, a teaspoon with a black permanent marker in the middle. Yeah, that'll be fine. Done. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm really looking forward to that. So yeah, keep them for me. Yep, cool. I'm going to spend a good week or so building something awesome nice. for them. I don't want to rush it. Nope. And um, when it's ready, we'll come collect them. Looking forward to that. Sounds good. See you soon. So we've got our feature fish, seen them in person, know the requirements, got all the information I need. It's time to start the build. But first of all, I'm gonna need to clear out a tank because I haven't got a big one spare at the moment. This is my four foot Indian themed aquarium. The tiger barbs aren't actually Indian, but just don't worry about that. Now it's doing okay. Like the plants are surviving, they're not thriving. Like the crypts though, doing pretty well. I mean, they don't require a huge amount of nutrients, you see, and they don't grow fast. But anything that does grow fast at the back, like 
some of that limb, the feeler there, it just looks a bit scraggly. This is because when I built the tank, I didn't refresh the, sub the substrate. I thought there was enough nutrients in it. That obviously wasn't. Now I could go around and root tab everything, but what's the point in that? Let's just build something awesome and new. Before we do anything though, we need to set up a temporary tank for all of these fish to go in. So I'm really gonna take my time with this build and for that reason, I wanna set up something half decent with an actual filter for these guys to just hang about in whilst we're doing it. It means I don't have to rush everything. I can also put the plants I wanna reuse into that tank as well as the fish and they'll be absolutely fine for a good week or so. Right, the tank's clear. Next job is to bring the water level down a lot lower. Then I can pull up some of the substrate, move it across, and also put those crypts in. I want to keep all the crypts. Then I can start to catch the fish once I've taken all the hardscape and all the plants. Oh, there's so much to do. So we are back down to the bare bones of the aquarium, all the fish, doing absolutely fine over there, look. So now that I've got a low water level, I'm just gonna scoop out a load of this substrate. I'll push the rocks back, load it up into the empty tank. I can put the plants that I've saved down here into that tank as well. I can put the fish in and I can put a little filter in as well using the same sponge that's in that one at the back. So we're all good. Okay, I've got some substrate in, the rest is proven more difficult to get to because I've got big bags of aqua soil all uh, underneath. There we go, so I need to take all that out. I'm gonna take everything out of the aquarium. The water will go murky, but don't worry, it doesn't harm the fish at all. You should see some of the rivers these guys come from. <laughs> A lot murkier than this is. There we go, bags out, all the fish are in there. They're all just swimming. Oh, there's an Amano shrimp doing well, tiger barb. They're all dotted about and the sand is banked to the back. That's the main thing. So now I can scoop it out. I can also catch all the fish easy then once I fill up that tank, of course. I'm gonna use fresh water or dechlorinated fresh water because why not? I'll make sure the temperatures are matching and everything like that, so don't worry. Right, that's enough water. Next up, I need to transfer the filter media. That filter there cannot go in that little tank. It, it's way too powerful. I mean, it's pretty powerful in this four foot one, let alone in this tiny little one. So I've got a smaller one, take up the sponge and then swap it over. Be a good idea to push this so it's not in the way as well. Please don't tip over. They seem to be good. Just don't hit anything. We're clear. I think we're clear. Please be clear. <laughs> okay, there we go. Look, filter's running. Might as well stick a little light on it as well. I've got a spare one. Why not? There we go. And now I can just add in all the plants I want to keep as well. So first of all, we've got some nice, really nice crypts here. I don't know what crypts they are. I can't remember. <laughs> Planted them so long ago. It's dotting them about. It's not escape, it's just places for them all to hide, all the fish to hide. If they want to hide, that is, I mean, they might be absolutely fine. Then we've got the last bigger one, and I've got some nice stems for the background area, which are way too tall for this tank, but we, <laughs> we'll forget about that. Right, whilst that tank's clearing, I just want to show you a little update of some fish that I got recently. They are so cute, and they're doing brilliant as well. So here are, oh, uh, guys, guys. There you are. <laughs> so here are my brand new baby ranchu goldfish. Uh, they have been in for a full day now. It's day two. It's actually time to do a little bit of a water change. And um, the water, well, it, it's a new, new tank. So I had to cycle the tank with fish in. We've got beneficial bacteria in there, which I, I always tell all of you guys, you need to test the water daily when you're doing this. So not only do the guys look absolutely awesome, healthy, look, swimming beautifully, they've got a ton of duckweed that I put in as well. Yeah, hang on, there you go. There's all the duckweed. Now they've actually eaten so much of that already that they produced waste. You see that's getting caught up in some areas. Now, as they swim around, they will just push that up into the water column. But, it, oh, and I've added a bristle nose pleco as well because he's gonna keep these rocks nice and clean and a little friend for them. 
<laughs> They're quite interested in it, which is cute. Yeah, quick water change on this one, and we should be perfect again. There we go, look, I'd say we are registering a little bit of ammonia and no nitrite, so it is right, we just need to do a nice big water change. There we go, that's those guys all sorted for a little while longer. I'll test again tomorrow, and like every single day, to be honest, I'll just keep doing these water changes for at least a week, regardless of testing, and then by that point, we should be getting somewhere with the cycle. But back over our temporary tank, we are clear, crystal clear. Um, that looks awesome, doesn't it? Kind of makes you wonder why I spent so much money on all these different bits of hardscape. <laughs> yeah, I can now switch the fish across. And they're all in here, look, they're everywhere. It's not gonna be easy to catch them. There's loads of bristle noses. I didn't actually realize I had so many in that tank. They've been breeding as well, so there are some babies. But yeah, double net method, I think. Coming from one side with one net, scoop into the other one. Okay, I think I've got them all, but you know how it is. There's always one or two still still left in the tank, but I'll, I'll keep an eye out for them in a minute when I clear it all. Whee! I didn't actually need two nets in the end, and surprisingly, given the speed of the torpedo barbs, very easy to catch. I thought it was gonna be a nightmare, but they kind of just, they just went gentle and slow. They kind of let you just scoop them up. They're definitely gonna be all right in here for a good week or so anyway. Obviously, this is definitely not a long-term home for um, torpedo barbs. They're way too big and fast when they grow up to go in a tiny little two foot tank. So the fish are now all safe and good. And what that means we can knuckle down with the build, not worry about them at all and take our time with it. I was gonna take all this sand out, start from a completely clean slate, but that's an absolute waste of time because I'm gonna be putting it straight back in again. I'm always one for saving time where you can. Don't, don't do pointless things. And there's no reason for this to go on longer than it needs to. It's already gonna be a long build. So yeah, tank size is four foot, two foot, two foot. So pretty simple, I'll put all the information up on the screen and the lighting is uh, like homemade by me it's uh, led floodlights 6500 kelvin 30 watts 30 watts on a piece of wood suspended from the ceiling on some fishing wire that you can just about see <laughs> and then we've got two power cables which obviously they feed to each light they run down the side of the tank and go into the plug socket. So yeah, it's quite a simple design. The stand was made by me as well, back along. This was actually one of the first stands I made. So it's like, it's a bit shoddy craftsmanship, but it's always done me well and it's fully sturdy and secure. We'll get onto filtration later on, but we're nowhere near that part yet. First of all, I need to start getting rocks in. Because we're making an aquatorium, I wanna make two islands but they need to come right up high with a valley in the middle. I think that'd be quite cool. Now to do that, I need to make a retaining wall with the rocks. So you start off with rocks on the bottom, then load behind it, and then you can go to the next level and the next level. So first of all, we get some rocks in. First one going in, right, it's a big old rock. Put it on some of that sand. There we go, then the load spread. It's not gonna damage the glass anyway. As long as you put stuff down gently, thick glass, all good. Yeah, that's a good little spot actually. Now, not all the rocks I've got here, <sighs> going to be matching so I'm not worried about that too much some people might be don't bother me though put some some there like that you know there's not too much difference is there yeah need some more over this side for sure careful of the glass angles works quite well if you can create good angles it looks a bit more dramatic than loads of flat piled up bit of a jigsaw piece of course That's quite cool, it's got a little crevice in it. Just trying to create some sort of interesting angles of things really. Now behind this now, I can stick a load of gravel just to bulk up the area. So gravel goes in close to the front of the rocks and that'll fill up the majority of any gaps. And then I can bulk up this back area with like aqua soil and finer stones a bit of nutrients and it'll also help balance the pH and everything just make good water parameters extra biological filtration basically plus I've got loads of it spare so all of this is recycled from other tanks that I've done now that is just the start that's nowhere near the height that we need to be so you just got to keep doing that until you're happy with you know what level you're at across the board I want to be coming up a good three quarters of the aquarium you know about three quarters of the way up and um, maybe a little bit less actually 
just to be absolutely sure. They can probably jump about the length of their body. You know, they're not huge, so we should be okay. And if I need to lower the water level, I can anyway. <laughs> awesome, there is our main rock structure. Looks a little bit wooly at the moment because we haven't got any wood. Uh, but that'll it'll, it'll be fine, it'll look wicked. I'm gonna bring some wood across the two islands, the top and bottom, the thinner one a bit. I'm not even sure yet how I'm actually gonna do it, but there's gonna be wood coming into the foreground and upwards, it's gonna look wicked. At the moment, it's just rocky, but it's still quite cool. Look, good angles, good good uh, little crevices and things. Cover it in Anubius and that kind of thing, and it's gonna look so good, isn't it? Well, I think so anyway, once we've got a nice substrate, the plants, oh, it's gonna be so good. Loads of like, terrestrial ferns, a massive peace lily coming out the top as well. Next job though, like I said, is getting that wood in and giving some structure to that. I'm gonna go with vine wood. It's, uh, it's or is it wine wood? One, one or the other. Anyway, I've used it before in an aqua terrarium that I did ages and ages ago, and it works really well. Yeah, here is the stuff, look at that. Oh, I'm tripping over it all. So this is what I was thinking. Something cool we could go across at an angle maybe, just to, to join the two pieces up. Something like that. Oh my goodness, that looks so good. And then I've got a smaller one, which can go maybe the other side. What are we thinking? I mean, I already think that looks insane like that. I've got another piece of that wood as well, although it's not been submerged in water. So it's got like more of an orangey tone. Let me put it in and see. I was thinking for down here, but it could be too much, but it might not be. So you've got to try, you've always got to try stuff. It's definitely adding a, a much more 3D sort of view to the tank. But, and it'll be interesting for the fish to go in and out of, but it could be spoiling that sort of view and making it look too, yeah, I think it, it kind of loses shape. It just looks like a kid's drawn a mess. Do you know what I mean? You can't see the, uh, the rocks, you can't see Jewel Island, the path down the middle. So I think that's one too many there, but that's okay. That's why we do this is just to, just to see. It could be actually a good idea. Let me get this back where I had it roughly. It could be an idea to come even higher with one piece. So we've got even more out of the water because sometimes that looks even even better than having it in the water. So if I can do something like, uh, not that. <laughs> so the way that that sweeps right over, kind of joins in the middle and then comes over this way. I'm really liking that. This is also giving structure for us to put plants into and around. It'll keep their shape, keep them upright. And it's also still leaving us with massive amounts of swim room in this whole bottom section. So I've got two canister filters that are 20 each as well. So there's another 40. Yeah, we're, we're definitely good for water volume for sure. I'm gonna go with that, it looks fantastic, doesn't it? <laughs> now I said that it is possible for archer fish to jump up to catch their prey, as well as like spitting at it. So I need to be careful with the water level here. So the rocky area comes up in height to about here which is actually perfect. There's, there's no way they, they're gonna be able to jump higher than that. Um, there's a possibility of them jumping onto the land area though. So we need to make sure that that's actually sloped so that if they do, they'll just jump back in. I mean, it is quite sloped, but that last area there where you can see where the stones are, I've left that bare at the moment. And that's because that's where I'll put the roots of the plant systems into. And then I'll put more rocks on top, maybe some moss, that kind of thing as well. Because we need to have our outlets for the filter coming over each side and then that way the water will just trickle down into the sort of main area. I might need to put some additional flow in just to stop anything in the background area getting sort of lock, lodged in and that. But saying that, I'll have plants in there anyway, so the plants will use any nutrients that get caught into the, the sand. Yeah, we'll go with that. I have to say though, I'm currently so unsure about what substrate to go with. Do I go with a light substrate? Do I go with a dark one? Um, should I go coarse? Should I go fine to coarse and like grade it out? Do I use the Rio Shingu, which looks absolutely amazing? Oh, there's so many options. I think I kind of want to have your input on it, guys. I think the colors of the fish would stand out with a more darker substrate, but I do like that sandy sort of rivery look as well. And when I say sandy rivery look, this is the one I'm, I'm talking about. So the way we've got like the boulders and that, little bits of stone and then the fine sand coming out into the foreground like that, it does look super, super natural, doesn't it? But will it take away the coloring from the fish? It doesn't in this tank because they're against the sort of 
darker backdrop with the gloominess of the uh, reeds in the background and the dark wood. And to be fair, once I've got all like dark Anubius and everything all over the rocks, we would get that look as well. So should I go dark though? That's the point, should it, should it be different? I'm just so unsure about this because I have got so many different gravels and things to choose from. Um, this one here I'm quite liking, you see. It's, it's dark, but it's, I don't know, it's like, a, it's like a very clean look. Do you know what I mean? I think that could work. And then of course we've got the stand, standard like proper clean sand off white that looks so, so natural. And over here in the Endler tank, remember there's no filter on this and it's dirted. But what I'm trying to show you is down here, do I go full Rio Shingu the whole lot? Like put a fine sand down of course, and then just loads of the Rio Shingu covering everywhere. Oh, so many, so many options are just, how good does this tank look though? The reds are really coming through now. Oh, and, and the fish, the fish are really coming out. Look at the coloring on them all, it looks so good. But it's that Ludwigia Palustria Super Red I'm loving at the back. I'm gonna use some of that for sure. So yeah guys, I can really use your input in this. So comment down below, should we use light or dark substrate or decorative gravel, whatever, whatever you wanna call it? Should we go fine, should we go coarse? Should we mix it all? Should we do the riverbed look? Just help me out. Uh, it's a tough one. I'm trying to think best for the fish. I want these fish to look absolutely insane in there. So I suppose technically is dark better or does dark make coloring darker and light makes it light? Um, help me. <laughs> in the next video though, we're gonna sort the substrate system. We're gonna plant the whole thing up. We're gonna fill it up with water. Probably gonna do all the uh, top plants, plants all amongst the rock, filtration system as well. And then after that, it'll be like, go and collect the fish. Wow, oh, so much still to do, so much still to look forward to. See you on the next one.